Just a little update in the Texas area. We've had a couple storms out there west of Waco. You can see those anvils have sheared off about an hour ago. And those are the old orphan anvils heading off into the blue yonder. However, we did have one cell come together near Cleburne. That's south of Dallas-Fort Worth. And you can see there at the very end, very impressive overshooting top down there around the Mansfield area. Also, you can see the moisture. This is all the tropical sector, and it's showing up very well with the sun hanging in low in the western sky, contrasting with the drier air off to the west. And further west, some clouds, probably from some upper level lift. This is all elevated Q back there in the hill country and the big country. But that's probably a sign of the short wave approaching this region. And then out to the east, we've got the elevated convection still going on. That's kind of a haphazard, motley assortment of multicellular storms going on in the Shreveport area and out towards Longview and Tyler. So there's those storms we have there south of Dallas-Fort Worth. Nothing too impressive right now. You can see along the edges, especially near the inflow, not much of a gradient. See that? It's not really packed together on the south side. And the velocity, not really showing very much going on right now. However, they are capable of some heavy rain and hail and wind. And let's see what the warning says. The northern storm, ping pong ball sized hail, 60 mile an hour wind gust, emphasizing that outflowish character. And I'm not too sure if these are going to be able to hold on or not, because these are mostly firing due to the afternoon heating. They could continue moving eastward and get into the better moisture and sustain themselves, or they could dissipate in the next hour or so. Anyway, out to the west, you can see that dry line right there, all the way from West Fort Worth out towards Meridian and Gatesville. And we can run the animation and see that forward progression of the dry line is kind of coming to a halt as it usually does during the evening. And these cells are just a little bit out ahead of that in the better moisture. Now, one problem with these storms, they are a little bit high based. These are the surface plots with the dew point depression. And that storm there fired in this region here where dew point depressions are 16 to 19, which means probably bases up near four to 5,000 feet. If that storm was able to keep going east, it would get into this better relative humidity, lowered bases, and that's always good for supercellular development. But I'm kind of on the fence whether that's going to happen. Most likely what we're going to see is that stuff up from Oklahoma coming in from the north, and that'll get into some of that better relative humidity overnight, although the instability will be a little bit lower. And there's those storms in the Oklahoma City area. They are pretty much multicellular, kind of outflowish, and they're booking towards the southeast. And after dark, yeah, they will be in that Red River region and start interacting with that deeper moisture that we painted out on that severe weather composite on the earlier program uploaded about an hour ago. Huh, looks like a little bit of wildfire smoke kind of mixed in the backside right there. Anyway, so yeah, our focus will be on this area a little bit later this evening. This will be the last update for tonight. I just wanted to kind of share that with you. And wow, yeah, there's some dust coming down along that cold front. Yeah, that's it right there. And then the dry line running about like that. And then you can see the triple point up there west of Ardmore. Anyway, a lot going on out there. Very interesting. Okay, have a great evening, and we'll see you next time.